Welcome to Words for My Face. On tonight's show, we're talking about the NCAA's first ever playoff team. So, well, they released the first four that would be in it if they all just started the playoffs today. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to be talking a lot of NFL. We got Champ Bailey retiring, talking about Michael Vick. Tom Brady doesn't suck. And we've got World Series Chewbacca Chainsaw. Round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words from My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> Yes, yes, and Chewbacca is in a good mood right now. It's 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 rare, but he is. He's in a good mood. Basketball season just started last night, so he's happy. And we all love happy Wookiees. Yay! Those angry Wookiees, especially ones with chainsaws. You know, that's never any good. But, yeah, so it is Thursday, so we are talking sports tonight. Yeah, 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 you know. Mm. Doing our normal, normal Thursday thing. Sports. Yeah, and uh, Redskins won against the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a great Monday night game. It was no, a great no. Monday night game. It really was. Um, just because it was overtime, it was competitive, it was just entertaining. Uh, my team won. It was close the entire game through, too. Like, mm-hmm. It wasn't just, oh, someone came back at the end. It was the whole game. It was just very back and forth. I mean, that's what you expect out of a rivalry game. So entertaining all the way through. So thank you, Redskins, for showing up. And thank you, Cowboys, for losing. I don't know who else to thank. Um, thank you, Tony Romo, for pushing yourself back into the game when you were hurt, obviously, and you couldn't move around. Uh, thank you, Jeff Hazlitt, for just blitzing and blitzing and more blitzing. And thank you, Brashad Breland, for being there where you, where you, where you needed to be. So, all right, that's Thanks, all McCoy, for throwing no interceptions, right? Uh, th- he threw an interception. Fine, very few interceptions. <laughs> thank you for not throwing Less more than one than interception. Have- Less than we've been getting. <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, there we go. But let's start it off this week the same way we started off every week, and that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. <laughs> and this week's award goes to Madison Bumgardner. Yes, he does have a funny name, but this guy can pitch. Uh, now, he is the pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. He is their ace. And the reason I'm giving him this award is not only did he pitch two full starts in the World Series and won both starts. He, this guy's been spectacular. He's been lights out in the playoffs all year, well, all playoffs long. Um, but he came in last night in relief in the fifth inning and pitched five scoreless shutout innings to help the, the San Francisco team. Three to two. Um, now, so that means he accounted for three wins in a seven-game series. Wow. Three wins, all him. In a seven-game win- World Series. Seven-game World Series. So at least the World Series was pretty decent. It actually won seven games. But Baumgartner got seven of those wins. So go ahead and give him the Chewbacca Chainsaw. Seven of those. Three of those wins, if I could speak. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so we did wrap up the World Series last night. Uh, unfortunately, we were kind of rooting for the Royals. Well, we were at, on the show until they beat the Orioles in an embarrassing fashion, and then I was just like, no more rooting for the Royals. Be gone, Royals. And, and that was their downfall. That's, that's what, when you don't have words from my face backing you, you go down. That's why Kevin Durant is so lifted up. Yeah, that's why he got the MVP. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> no, he he got the MVP because he's the. All right, well we'll save that for basketball talk. But uh, yeah, so so they they did win, and it wasn't in you know it was a pretty interesting series in, in all because the Royals coming in played a bunch of one run really close games. I want to say they won their first eight games in a row in the playoffs. Multiple games of those went to extra innings, and they just seemed to be rolling through everybody, not by you know blowing them away, but by just just doing just enough more than the other teams to win said World Series. Now, the Giants came through in a similar route. Now, they did go a little bit longer with uh, the Nationals and the Cardinals than the Royals had with any of their players, uh, teams that they played. Uh, we all look back at the 18-inning 
playoff game against the Nationals in the in the NLDS. So that was pretty crazy. But they both made it there. Now you really saw coming in here that you had one team with a ton of experience. They had been to two previous World Series in the past five years, and one team with absolutely zero experience that hadn't even been to the playoffs in 29 years. So yeah. you saw the kind of. I mean, to be fair, like had they been to the playoffs in the last 10 years, it's not like it matters for this particular team that's on the field now. But sure. but definitely a city that hasn't experienced being in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, so. And there was probably not very much expectation of these guys uh, going there until this year. At least I didn't expect it. I mean, even through the middle of the season, a lot of people didn't expect them to get there. And, and it didn't look like they were going to make it for a while in the middle of the season. Uh, you can look back at some of our shows. We talked about the Royals pretty often until they quit doing Clash of Clans. Apparently, that was all they needed not to do was play Clash of Clans. And then I, it's all good from there. So, But, but you did you have an extra maybe. Uh, Maybe there was a Clash of Clans like update during the World Series. There actually was one, and uh, they, they like have <laughs> Halloween theme motifs. Maybe that sucked them back in. They're like, we can't stay away. We can't stay away. But and... we're the World Series. I, I don't Clash know. of Clans. <laughs> we can't stay away. But we saw a really different World Series than I was really expecting. I was expecting more of the same, you know, one-run games here and there. But it really wasn't that way. Like the first game. Uh, was like a 7-2 Giants win, then the second game was a 7-1 Royals win, and there was a lot of lopsided games in there, except for when Bumgarner was in there, and he just won everything. So, yeah, it was an entertaining series. Unfortunately, the Royals didn't get their win, so sorry, Kansas City fans, but San Francisco fans, yeah, you were writing last night. I don't, I don't know why you need to write. You've been there three times in the past five years, and you won. So, like, shouldn't some of the novelty have worn off a little bit? Why nope. riot? Nope. This is like, baseball. If anybody won in a DC town, yeah, we'd write because we haven't won anything forever. Riot, except for in like though, tennis. Or just celebrate. Uh you're right. Don't riot. That's kind of bad. But like I've seen like, honestly, honestly uh, maybe I haven't been paying attention I I probably haven't been paying attention because I turn off the news at that point. Um but I don't remember a lot of football it happening in football a lot where there's riots. I know when uh City wins a hockey, the 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 Stanley Cup, there are sometimes big riots. Um, and in baseball, that happens. But I don't know very many football cities that, like, riot over the Super Yeah, and Bowl. I think I'm calling it riot, but it wasn't really a riot, per se. Just there was a lot of ruckusness and some people being mischievous, more mischievous than they should have been. Oh. Uh, like, there was a lot of pictures of people burning stuff. Doesn't necessarily mean riot, but just, just no, means I'm being told Pittsburgh riots when they win. Pittsburgh? When they win the Super Bowl, Pittsburgh riots. They're, they're jerks. Nobody likes Pittsburgh. Okay, I'm sorry. I just, I just had to say that they win too much. They win Stanley Cups. They win Super Bowls. If you're not, if you win too much, I don't like you. Yes, that means my that's team's why we're. <laughs> that's <laughs> why we're Redskins, Nationals, and Wizards fans. Yes, we don't like those teams that win too much. And, and Capitals, you know, they they don't win at all. So you know, and <laughs> Orioles, you know, but yeah. So yeah, it was an entertaining World Series. I'm glad it went to seven games because the previous couple games in the playoffs just just sucked. So. Uh, I mean, rounds in the playoffs. Just there's too many sweeps going on in there. Just nothing very competitive. So at least this one went seven games, and it you know kind of was close. It was a three-two game last night, and you had Bumgarner come in and pitch five scoreless innings, which was just spectacular. I I don't think you'll ever see a pitcher win three games like that mm -hmm. ever. I mean, he was only on two days rest and came in and pretty much pitched a whole game. And so, you know, hats off. That's why he got a Chewbacca Chainsaw Award. But let us know what you guys think about the World Series. Um, was it entertaining to you? Are you a Kansas City fan or are you a San Fran fan or are you just not a fan of either but you're rooting for one or the other? Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words from My Face at gmail.com. Uh, Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's take that and let's move on to the next story. And that is talking about another set of playoffs that is still about two months away. And that is the first ever NCAA football playoffs. Now, this year is the first year they have instated a four-team playoff. So instead it's of just a having... Time coming. Yeah, and it, yeah, it's a very long time coming because they already have the best sporting event in all of sports with March Madness. 
how come they couldn't just figure it out to get it into to football? So they this year they're doing four games. Uh, I'm sorry, not four games. Four teams. The top four teams in the rankings are going to be in a playoff. So you know, one versus four, two versus three, and then the winners of each of those games meet for the national championship. Now this is a good idea. It is it is a lot better than the previous way of doing it because I mean, especially in college football when there's so many of those teams and they don't really all play each other head to head. It's hard to really say who the number one, number two, number three, number four team is. So it's good, but I really think they should expand it out to at least eight. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like this, it's it's almost a bit of a joke of a playoffs when it's yeah. just four teams. Because like, the last game high. that they'll play is going to be, I think, the latest game any of these play these teams play is probably about the last weekend of November, and then they don't play again until the first like like the second to last week of, or the last week of December. So there's already like a three week break in there. So go ahead and pull, take a week off, play a game, take a week off, play another game. And then boom, you're right there for the last couple games. And it, it really wouldn't be that much harder to just expand it to four more teams. So they're kind of dropping the ball with that, but you know what? Hey, we'll take what we can get baby steps. Let's, you know, Move it yeah, towards what I want. Uh, yeah, I, I'm guessing that they want to kind of ease into it, see, test the waters a bit, um, because it, I guess it is a radical change for uh, for how college football has worked in the past. Yeah, um, but it's such oh man, it's such a needed change. It's going to bring so much more money and so many more fans. To people have been calling for it for a long time. For some people, I guess some people really like the system, and that's why they have to kind of test the waters. Uh, yeah, the people um, who like the system were the the big BCS sponsors for those bowl games because they're like money, 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 money. Because there was you know four bowl games that were just as big as the national championship, and so there was the sponsors for that, and they made more money off of that. Now they'll still keep those big bowl games, but they'll just put those in the playoffs. So I, I don't understand, you know, money, money is money, that money, money, you know, money, money, mm, money, money, money. But you're gonna make more money, so I don't know, money. Money, yeah, money. I think maybe the, the schools preferred to be able to put on their wall that they won Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Rose Bowl, whatever, in the the bowls, rather than made it to second round of playoffs. Money, money. Because money. those bowl games aren't going away. They're just going to replace... <laughs> they're just going to replace... Um, like so, the first two games will probably be like the Orange and the Rose Bowl, and the last game will be the championship game. So they're still going to call those the bowl games. They're not going to yeah, be the but now. But now they everyone knows what they really are. Like there's money. no beating around money. the bush that these lots of money. this is first round money. Play. Lots, lots and lots of money. That's that's <laughs> that's all this comes down to. So, but it's going to be more money. But let's talk about the actual teams uh, that are, have been in those first four rankings. Um, mm -hmm. And let's start off with the number one team in the country, which is the number one team in the rankings. That is Mississippi State. Now, this is a kind of a surprise. These guys kind of came out of nowhere this year. Yeah, they were looked to be a good team, but who knew they were going to be this good? Mississippi's often pretty good. Not Mississippi State. Not this good. Uh, you look at Ole Miss, they're usually up there, but Mississippi State's not usually this good. Usually they're ranked, but they're not yeah. usually number one. Now, they are <laughs> playing in the NFL light that I like to call uh, the SEC Conference. Um, and you know, So let's go over a couple of their wins. They are 7-0 and right now. Their biggest wins are against LSU, who is number 19. Texas A&M, now they have dropped way down recently because they've lost a bunch of games, but they played a lot of good teams. Um, and Auburn, who is ranked number three. So they they played and beat some really good teams. But still to come, they have Alabama, who's ranked number six. They're playing them on the 14th, and they have Ole Miss, who's ranked number four, on the 28th. So we're still plenty of time to go. And, you know, some of these teams might beat each other out of making it to the playoffs because they might beat each other up. But then you have Florida State. Now, Florida State, even if they go undefeated, I'm not 100% convinced that they deserve it because their schedule is by far – easiest of any of these because they play in a really weak ACC, but so far their big wins are against Notre Dame, ranked number 10 right now, and Clemson, ranked number 21. Now, I'm not trying to say that they don't have the best player in the country in James Winston, but he's probably also one of the stupidest players in the country, cost himself already probably about $20 million this year alone um, in draft money, so... Yeah, he's already, like... Did he ever get a suspension for for a couple games? No, or but they that... kind of like just overlooking stuff so far. Uh, money, money. Yeah, but I'm just saying like <laughs> he, he's also like having him on the team is not 
necessarily as great if he's a risky uh, move and might not be able to play because of something happening. Like, it, it, there's still always a possibility that he'll actually get arrested and then not be able well, to play. No, he wouldn't get arrested. He wouldn't get arrested for signing stuff. No, 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 I'm saying for for other stupid stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. Doing something else. He, he he decided, hey, I'm hungry. Let me eat some crab legs. Let me just stick them down my pants and try to walk out of this seafood market. Yeah, so you never know. Like he he might push too many buttons and at some point like suddenly he can't make it to a game. Yeah, so so, you never so having know, him doesn't help you if that happens, you know. Now their big games upcoming is Florida. Florida's having a really down year for Florida, but they're still Florida, so you can't count them out. And um, Louisville, uh, I believe they're actually playing them Saturday. Louisville's like ranked number twenty-five, so yeah, they they haven't lost in two years, but it's a really weak, really weak conference. And you'll look at three of the top four slash four of the top six our SEC team, so <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> interesting. Um, then number three, like I said, an SEC team is Auburn. They're 6-1. and one. Their big wins against LSU and South Carolina. South Carolina's not up in the rankings, but they're a pretty tough team, especially a Steve Spurrier uh, team. Now, their one loss was to Mississippi State, so, you know, if in terms of losses, uh, it's not the worst loss in the world to the number one team in the country. Could be worse, you know. But you and it's also in college football. It's about when you lose to teams. If you lose earlier in the season, it's looked at a lot better than losing later in the season. So I think they were lucky to get that out of the way. But they do have a pretty tough schedule still coming up. They still have to play Texas A&M again. They're on a downward slope, but a solid team. Uh, they're playing Georgia number eleven, and that is in two weeks. And actually, Todd Gurley, the suspended. Uh, running back from Georgia, will be returning in two weeks. The NCAA has decided to let him return to play after the indefinite suspension he suffered, I uh, believe, three, four weeks ago. And that guy is a beast, and especially this year he's been playing amazing. So they're getting Georgia at the exact wrong time to play Georgia, and Georgia is ranked number 11 still, even without their superstar. Uh, then they have to also play Alabama, and they have to play Ole Miss, number four. So they definitely have some hard teams. But if they win that out, I could see them jumping up to m- number one. Mm-hmm. Um, even, well, I guess, yeah, yeah, because they have to play. Yeah, even if even if Mississippi State wins out, eh, no, if Mississippi State wins out, they're going to be number one, definitely. But if Auburn wins out, they're going to be number two. And then we have number four, Ole Miss. They are seven and one right now. Big wins against Alabama. Again, they beat Texas A&M. And they went out of conference and scheduled a team that is traditionally pretty good in Boise State, and they beat them. So that was them. Now, their one loss is to LSU, still ranked team number 19 in that SEC division. Uh, You know, pretty good rivalry that they play all the time. And that LSU team is young, but they got a ton of talent on it. So, yeah, not this year. They're not going to be contending for the playoffs, but I could see them in the next two years definitely being playoff contenders. So, again, not the worst loss in the world earlier on in the season. So, well, actually, I think that was last week, so not that much earlier on. Um, but let's look at so two of the teams that are looking in, and we'll be, start with Oregon. They are number five. They play in the Pac-12, which is a pretty good conference. Mm-hmm. Not the SEC, but a, still a really good conference this year. Um, they're 7-1. and one. They have uh, Mariota. He's pretty much... If Gurley hadn't been suspended... Mariota would be the number two Heisman candidate, but I think Mariota right now, with Gurley's suspension, is the number one Heisman quarter- candidate at quarterback. So they got a really, really st- stellar player there. Their big wins are against UCLA, number 22, and Michigan State, number eight. Um, so, uh, Yeah, it's, it's also interesting how um, it doesn't seem like there's many or any teams with a uh, undefeated record really on the list. Well, the first two were. That's it, though. Yeah, other than the the first two, but like after that, like I I remember from at least there has been in years past where there were a lot more undefeated teams by this point in the in the season. Um, yeah, especially when you get some of the smaller schools like like the Boise States of old, where they would go undefeated and just yeah not quite make it there, or you'd have like a TCU or something like that playing really well, but they don't play in the the same divisions. The SEC mm-hmm. when you play in the SEC, yeah, someone's going to come out undefeated, but who is it going to be? It just so happens to be Mississippi State so far, and a lot of the losses like Ole Miss, uh, I'm sorry, uh, like Auburn lost to Mississippi State. You know, that's a big, you know. I, I, I do think more. it's it's better in this situation than just seeing because. It's weird to watch the judgment of 10 undefeated teams. 
like in who's the best or, or however many, like maybe five. It usually does, yeah, it usually boils yeah. down to about three or four. But um, yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, because that can be really weird. And that's it why it just seems like good, maybe the like, little too lopsided at that point. Like there wasn't enough parity in the games if someone can come out just completely undefeated. Yeah. But, well, then that's also the good point about uh, having the at least the four teams because usually you don't have more than four teams go undefeated. So that'll mm-hmm. help even that out. But so Oregon, they did lose one game to Arizona, ranked number twelve. Uh, now their big upcoming game will be against Utah, number seventeen. So and we'll talk a little more about Utah a little bit later. And then the other one you have uh, the perennial, at least attending the national championship game team in Alabama. They are ranked number six right now. They are seven and one. Uh, they've beaten their big wins are West Virginia and Texas A&M. West Virginia is ranked number 20, and they're kind of you know shooting up there. Uh, but then you have a loss to Ole Miss. Again, they're number four, so that's not the worst loss in the world. Now, upcoming, they do have LSU, Mississippi State, and Auburn. So if they win out, they're definitely in the playoffs. But if they lose one of those, and they very well could, because LSU, again, they're playing well. Mississippi State is ranked number one, and Auburn is a rivalry. So that's the Iron Bowl at the end of every year. So you never know what's going to happen. That was probably one of the best games of last year was the Iron Bowl, where they won it with Mm. one second left. So you never know what's going to happen there. I could see Alabama... You know, they have the experience. Their coach knows how to get them to the national championship. So I could see them making the playoffs pretty easily. But yeah, you never know. But I'm going to give you a dark horse. Now, this is a team that I don't Uh-oh. think will be on most Hold people's on. radars. Hold on. Dark horse? Oh, do we have a dark, dark horse? horse? Dark horse? Do we have a... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because if you had just left the thunder in there, I would have had to talk about Kevin Durant. But since you put the evil cackle laugh, I like it. That is our dark horse sound effect. All right. And so just the dark horse. Halloween. There you go. Perfect. Uh, the dark horse I'm going to give you is it is a ranked team, but I don't think many people would put this team on the radar. Now they have to do a lot to get in there, and a lot of people have to lose some games that they normally wouldn't for them to make it there. But you know, if they win out, I can see them going, and that is Utah. Utah is six and one right now. They are ranked, uh, I believe it's 16, and they have some interesting upcoming games. They they have to play. They have. Um, Wins against UCLA, Michigan, and USC, so quality wins. They did lose to Washington State, but that was early on in the season. So, again, it matters when you lose. Uh, But they have upcoming against ASU, Arizona State University, number 14. They have to play number 5, Oregon. They have to play number 12, Arizona. So three very, very quality opponents. And then they also have to play Stanford, which is always good. So um, if they win out, then that means Oregon's going to drop way back. I imagine that you know Mississippi State, Auburn, and Ole Miss, they still have to, and Alabama, they all have to play each other, you know, in some different combination here or there. So that's going to beat them up a little bit. Florida State, yeah, they're probably going to breeze through undefeated. But I could see a team like Utah shooting up the rankings, playing those quality opponents, and it really helped them that they're in the Pac-12. And if they can win out, which again they have to play some really good teams, I can see them making it. So let us know what you think. I want to hear some dark horses from people. Well, who's I your want dark to hear horse? Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame is your dark horse. So they are ranked what ten right now? No, they're higher than ten. I thought. That's I saw it. I saw it on. Nope, uh, nope, they're ten. They're ten? I thought they were like yeah. seven. No, they were five when they played Florida State, but then they lost to Florida State and fell back. Yeah, that's that's fine. You know what? They they have the determination. They can do it. You know Golden why? Doors. All they have to do. All they have to do is make all the players watch Rudy twice, uh, and then they'll pull through. They'll and get they'll that pull, drive. Okay. And okay. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, everybody out there, let us know your dark horses. Who's going to make it in that we wouldn't expect it? Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words for My Face on Twitter, Words for My Face at gmail.com, uh, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's move on to uh, the next topic of the night, and that is going to be. The NBA. Do we have a bat- ball- bouncing ball? Okay, we'll just clap. Yay. And the NBA, we don't really have much to talk about with the NBA. It's just going to be a quick couple of things. But I am excited. The season just started. Uh, the Wizards lost last night to the Heat. But then they came back and won tonight. So I'm not really going to give you a bunch of teams and stuff. I'm just talking about one of the bigger stories that happened. And that is Julius Randle. He is the, the rookie out of Kentucky. Uh, he was actually drafted by the Lakers, and when they drafted him, I was like, how did he fall that far, first of all? 
And now that he did fall that far, this is an amazing fit for him because he's going to be able to be there with Kobe for Kobe's last year or two. I can't imagine he'll go too much more. Soak in some of that knowledge, and then that's really a guy that they can build a team around. This guy's super athletic. He can score, and he can play defense, and he just seems like a nice guy in general. So I really like this player, and he unfortunately broke his leg last night and, or two nights ago, and it's pretty brutal because he is going to be out for the season. There's a lot of people, like, really good players with broken legs this season. Well, Paul George did it in the USA thing, so that's a bummer. Yeah, but still, yeah, so there's Paul George, and, and, and Kevin Durant's still injured, right? Yeah, he broke his foot. Yeah, that's a so. bummer. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, Kevin Durant won't let that be a season-ending injury, because <laughs> he's Kevin Durant. But, yeah, so that's that. Uh, and, uh, you know, but Kobe came out. I'll just talk a little bit about him. He did look good. He did not look like Kobe of old. We are not going to see the Kobe who averaged 36 points in a season ever again. So if you're looking for that, you're, you're looking in the wrong direction. You're, we're going to see a Kobe that scores 22 points a game but is almost as much of a coach on the court as he is a player. I was just looking at his press conference after the game against the Rockets, and it was like, wow, this guy, we saw Derek Fisher jump straight over to being a coach. We're going to see Kobe maybe take five years off, but he's going to be a coach one of these days. It just seems like he has the knack for it. Um, I think it's been a new trend, players becoming coaches. I don't know if it's new, but that seems yeah, to be the trend. It's always happened. Like NFL, 90% of those coaches are former players. Whether they were the caliber of players, the superstar players, probably not. But yeah, that was my, that was my impression. They, they, they had played the game before, but not necessarily that level of the game. Well, like Phil Jackson, one of the greatest NBA coaches of all time. He played for the New York Knicks. He was really good. Mm -hmm. um, you, you look at Jerry Sloan played. Uh, he's one of my favorite coaches of, time, of all time. Can't remember who he played for. Maybe the Celtics. I don't remember. Larry Bird was a really good coach for a while. Took the Pacers to a couple championships. He played, of course, for the Celtics. Uh, so yeah, you do have some really of the superstars, but not. I didn't not even a realize that. Uh, I didn't even realize Larry Bird had become a coach. It was about I ten years. Uh, well, maybe maybe fourteen years ago. It was a while back. I, yeah, you know, yeah, he, honestly, he doesn't do it, it anymore. He's a general manager now. I it's. Yeah, you know, I, I find less need to care about the coaches in, in basketball than I do in, say, football. But I don't. I don't think. I think you're correct. It's not quite as important. Uh, in football, it's more because you have to bring them all together. It's more of a system thing. Basketball, if you just put the right players that play together, right, in the same place. Not to say people like Phil Jackson, the Zen master, took all those great players, took all those egos, and found a way to just you know make them into one. You know, yeah, there's definitely good play calling, uh, importance in play calling and training and everything in the coaching in, in basketball too. It's mm -hmm. just yeah, compared to some other sports where the coach is an, an even bigger deal. Uh, yeah, now college it's, it's basketball. Still more than, yeah. College, college basketball, basketball, I think the coach is way more important mm -hmm. because it's yeah. about the system that they play. Um, but when you get the talent kind of evens out in the NBA, you're right. It's not quite as important. I totally agree with that. Uh, and then one other thing, it was kind of interesting uh, from that Houston Lakers game. I saw Dwight Howard kind of gave Kobe an elbow there. Now, Dwight Howard did play for one year with Kobe in the Lakers, and Kobe was kind of hurt most of that year, I think. And it was it was pretty interesting because he was, you know, Kobe, they, Dwight got a rebound and is kind of doing this. Kobe's, like, playing up on him, you know, just playing good defense, not fouling or anything. And Dwight kind of brings his elbow up, boom, and gets Kobe right in the face. And it almost mm. looked like they were going to fight. Um, they did have some words. There was a lot of trash talking. But it was just like, uh, Kobe, uh, you're old, and he's huge. So... Yeah. Kobe Kobe didn't get to where he is by by being afraid of people that are huge. That is for sure. <laughs> the Black Mamba did not get his name by backing down. And now I really found it funny. The press conference afterwards, uh, he was asked about it. He was like, come on, man. We were playing. We're in the heat of the game. He elbowed me. I had to make sure he knew I did not like that he elbowed me. <laughs> but he's a big teddy bear. I love the kid. He's a really good guy. Uh, I don't see anything else of this. So, you know, that's that, that's a professional right there, being able to leave everything out on the court rather than, you know, carry the grudge throughout. So I guess that's how he's lasted so long. Like you said, he had, did not become Kobe by letting all that bring him down. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that was really the NBA. It was really just about the Lakers. We just talked a lot of Lakers. So let us know what you think. Uh, any NBA stories you want us to talk about or, you know, 
Do you think Kobe could have beaten Dwight Howard in a grudge match? Hit us up, come down below. Google Plus grudge cage match on the court. Ba ba ba. Yeah, that'd be interesting. That would the cage just drops down from the ceiling. <laughs> Go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, and I could see Kobe like being like, "All right, I got to do some really crazy jujitsu and like running around it." And Dwight Howard be like, you know, like in all those kung fu movies, the big guy always loses. Because, like, like, Jackie Chan will be fighting the seven-foot guy, and Jackie Chan's really, like, five-foot, but he'll do all the crazy monkey style yep. type stuff, and he'll win. So, Kobe w- might have come. If it was I mean, a movie, then... Kobe, Kobe, Kobe will just climb up the, the cage and then drop down on his head and, like... <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing, though. I just remembered that Dwight Howard is also, like, super, super athletic. Like, he's been in tons of dunk competitions because he can jump and he's super agile. So, um, yeah, it would be, like, Zangief fighting it out there, because Zangief, you know how he could jump and do all those crazy yeah. moves and stuff, and still, like, you could do, like, crazy flips in the air. Yeah. Nobody wants to fight Zangief. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Unless you're Ryu or Ken. Because then you win. Because mm-hmm. if you were Ryu or Ken, Zangief couldn't do it. Or Chun-Li. Chun-Li was just too fast. You'd just jump. Right. Right. So, so we even just got half of the players. Like, it's like... <laughs> like fire. Come on or now. maybe if you were Blanca. Or, Dal- or, or Dalsim. Or, or... Or, or Vega. Or Vega, Vega, Vega could beat him too. Um, <laughs> you know, or E Honda, he might be able to beat Zangief. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or Guile, Guile with Sonic Boom. So, you know, unless you're a Street Fighter fighter, you cannot beat Zangief. How about that? I would say that's probably pretty fair. Probably. probably. We're just going to go with that. But let's, let's end our NBA topic and our Zangief topic. <laughs> I like the Zangief topic, though, you know. And let's talk a little bit of NFL. Um, and let's start off with Champ Bailey. Unfortunately, the legend has retired. Champ Bailey, uh, he was a Red- Washington Redskin for five years. He was a Denver Bronco for ten years. And he was battling some injury problems, was cut by the Saints earlier this year. And he's a 12-time pro bowler, future Hall of Famer. He's retired. So uh, give him a round of applause for the great career he had. And it, also, he was a classy guy. I do got to say that, too. Champ Bailey was a classy guy throughout his whole career. He never talked too much. He had, I think, one season, and I could be wrong, so go ahead and hit me up in comments, tell me how wrong I am about it. But I believe there was one season where he only had something like seven passes completed against him all year long. Mm. All year. That's a whole yeah, season. I, That's a whole 16 games. Seven passes completed against him, and he was I out there every when, uh, single one of those games. I remember when we traded him, when the when the Redskins traded him away, and being a little bit upset because he was, if not our best, I think he was our best uh, defender and maybe our best player. Yeah, at he was that our best time. player. He was our best player at that time. So yeah, uh, you know, and they got Ch- Clinton Portis, and Clinton Portis did. Do some really good very things. Very well, yeah, he's very well. But I, I still love Clinton Portis. I'm not hating on Clinton Portis. I think we got the short end of the stick because we had to also trade away a second round pick. I was like, what the heck? No, that's an even trade, you know, right there. But yeah, uh, yeah, for the for the one of the best, if not the best, defender in the league. Yeah, <laughs> one of the but, best cornerbacks that has ever played the game, and I have no qualms in saying that because Champ Bailey was that good. So you know, again, well, we'll miss you, Champ. But thank you for your your time, especially your time here in Washington. We loved you. Uh, yeah. So, and let's talk about somebody who's not playing so good and is not going to be a Hall of Famer, and that's Michael Vick. Now, Michael Vick, he's a good you player. You don't think he can be a Hall of Famer? Michael Vick? Uh, no. Maybe the dog fighting Hall of Fame. But <laughs> oh, go ahead and want me on that one because there's a lot of. Dogs. <laughs> Michael Vick um, took over in relief duties for Geno Smith this past week uh, after Geno Smith threw three first quarter interceptions. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Now, Michael Vick was really brought in to kind of be a mentor to Geno Smith. Geno Smith is only in his second year in the league after the Jets though, drafted him first. Before you go on, go ahead. three first quarter interceptions, not as bad as three fourth quarter interceptions. Are you taking a shot at Kirk Cousins? I, I didn't name anything. I'll just say it. Are you taking a shot it. at Kirk Cousins? <laughs> I'm not naming names. Yeah. All right, all right. Are the I initials K? Someone. Does he play for the Redskins and is are his initials KC? I'm just saying. Sometimes, if your name rhymes with Bert Trusins, throwing three interceptions Burke. is not a good Burke. idea. Burke Trusins. 
Burke yes. Trojans. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you took it there. Yeah. <laughs> Burke Trojans, we're watching you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So he took over in relief. Uh, after um, Geno Smith threw the three interceptions. Now, it didn't really do well. The Bills ended up still killing them that game. Uh, And now Rex Ryan is coming out and saying that Michael Vick will start next week. And I think this is a catastrophic mistake made by Rex Ryan. Now, Rex Ryan has done some really good things, but this guy is known almost for more of his dumb things that he's done. Now, he is famous. His wife actually has a tattoo. uh, Or no, he, I'm sorry. He has a tattoo of his wife on his back wearing a Mark Sanchez jersey. Now, if you know Mark Sanchez, he does not play for the Jets anymore. And when he did play for the Jets, he was pretty horrendous. So why would you tattoo that? That's also just weird. Yeah, it's, it is really weird. His <laughs> wife wearing a Mark Sanchez jersey. It's not not normal. Not at all. So and, and now, again, like, people why love to hate that? Rex Ryan. <laughs> I don't know. But people love to hate Rex Ryan just because this guy, he's he's always out there. Now, I have always kind of liked the guy. He says what he means, and he means what he says, but he doesn't always get the best results. Now, he did take him to two straight AFC championships his first two years there, so, you know, hats off to him there. But they haven't been so good after that, and they've kind of, they're redskin-like when the way they melt down, and it's hard to do that. Because there's only one team that melts down better than the Redskins, and that is the Browns. So, but you're taking what's supposed to be your franchise quarterback of the future in Geno Smith. That's why you used a first round pick on him last year, and you're just totally destroying him. You're taking him out of the game where he needs to get more experience, he needs to get better, and it. You know what? This they're one and seven. What's the point of putting somebody in as a starter? Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, you want to win games, but honestly, yeah. When I heard about this too. What what do they hope to gain here? I mean, if not, you're not likely to get the kind of wins that you would out of um, out of Michael Vick at this point when he has to now learn a new uh, system in the middle of the season. Like if he's jumping in in the middle of the season, the people haven't been no, playing. No, he's already him. been he there. He's been there. he's been the backup all year. What? They didn't what just. Did Michael Vick Whatever, is putting him in the middle, I don't know. You, you don't think it's good to a inject a, a new starter in the middle of the season when you don't have to. I agree. Yeah. Um, but, Unless you happen to be the Redskins. Yeah, well, and then it works out pretty well if you, as long as you put him in the middle of the game. Like Kirk Cousins, best backup quarterback to relieve somebody. Worst quarterback to start for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or I mean Burke Trusins. But yeah, so I just think they're destroying a, a talented kid. Now, is Geno Smith ever going to be, you know, an elite level quarterback? No, no, he's not. And I didn't think he was when they drafted him out of West Virginia. But is he ever going to be possibly maybe a Pro Bowler here or there? Yeah, you know, they put the right parts around him. He certainly could achieve that level maybe once or twice in a ten year career. But now you're destroying his confidence, and he's probably never going to achieve that. So yeah, I don't know. Let us know what you think. Should uh, they have left? Geno Smith in there, or should they start Michael Vick? I mean, do you, or should they get those wins that badly? Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Uh, of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter. Where's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus on Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Uh, but let's move on to the next NFL story, and that is Brady's back. Tom Brady. Okay, now i got to talk about Kevin Durant. So, Kevin Durant. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm earlier in the beginning of the season, we did a, a little story called uh, Does Brady Suck? And that was because last year he said, I'll retire when I suck. And after the September month that he had, it wasn't good. He b- sucked. And then I mean, now September, good. he's not. But now he's... Well, let's just compare his stats. In September, he had four touchdowns and two interceptions. Not horrible, but not Tom Brady numbers. In October, well, four he touchdowns, had two interceptions over the whole month. For the whole month, for so that's four games. It's not so horrible. One touchdown a game. Four games. Four, yeah, not great, not horrible, but not great. You know, but in October, he had How fourteen touchdowns and zero interceptions. So yeah, now a lot of this is attributed to Gronkowski's coming back. He's healthy. He's back in the flow, 
And for any quarterback, a six foot seven guy who can run over everybody on the field is a weapon. Uh, now you also have a resurgence of Brandon LaFell. Uh, they brought him over from the Carolina Panthers, thinking that he would really step up to be a number one receiver. And he hadn't done so so far, but he seems to be getting into his groove. And also their offensive line is finally giving him a little bit of time to throw the ball. So that's all the – it's like a perfect storm was against him. The perfect storm has now switched the other way, and he's kind of congealing at the right time because this week they're going to play in my game to watch of the week, uh, the Broncos. So this will be like the 10th time that I think Tom Brady and Peyton Manning played each other in the regular season. So that should be a lot of fun to watch. So – I have to do a retraction, and Brady does not suck. This month. This month. If you suck next month, I'm doing the story again that you suck, all right? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But, yeah, let's uh, move on to uh, more fun news. Not fun for him, but fun for us because it's just sheer stupidity. Uh, And that is because Sean Green got arrested this past Friday. Yeah, for last Friday. It came out over this past week. Um, but the reason he was arrested was, was was it was just like baffling to me. Okay, so he's at some sort of shopping mall or he's somewhere. He's park he parked his car in a handicap spot. Well, guy's not handicapped. Simple as that. He's a finely tuned he's athlete. An athlete. <laughs> yes, it's finely the tuned handicap. <laughs> so that I have a problem with that because the handicap spots are for people who need it, uh, to the, who do have handicaps. So why don't you leave it for them, you jerk? But that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to get on him about that. So he's returning to his car. All right, get on him. Look, those are for people who have trouble walking and getting into play or, or other issues. You are an athlete. You can clearly walk a few extra feet. Yes. You could walk a few extra miles. Yes. You'd be fine. Yes, yes, you would. You could probably do it better than most handicapped people, even if both your legs were broken. In fact, That's how why it, aren't you running it? Shouldn't you be trading nonstop? You know what? You are a running back, and you haven't been doing that well this year, so you should have been training. I agree with Brendan. You should have ran it. But so he was arrested because when he returned to his car, he was approached by a parking enforcement officer. Now, I don't know if they're, like, legit officers, but that's what they called him in the story. It was a parking enforcement officer. Where the parking enforcement officer said, hey, I don't see your handicap on thing on your license plate, and I don't see a placard in your window. Do you mind showing me your placard? And I see that placard? you could walk just fine. Yeah, and I see you're walking all right. <laughs> Show me your placard, please. Sean Green kind of looks at the guy, and I, I don't know for sure, but this is what I'm imagining Sean Green did. He kind of looked at him. Mm, get on my face. Kind of walks by him. The, the parking enforcement officer is like, come on, man, show me your stuff. And he just jumps in his car and speeds off, right? So in the process of him jumping in his car, he actually almost hit said officer and then peels out of the parking lot and goes away. So later that night, they issued warrants for his arrest. And the warrants were for, um, number one, failure to stop. Uh, number two, driving on a suspended license. Number three, oh, yeah, reckless suspended driving. Suspended license, no less. Yeah, suspended license. Number three was re- reckless driving, and number four was illegal parking. So he got a warrant arrest uh, for his arrest put out there. Now, to and to get him to come in, what they actually did was they called the Tennessee Titans, the team he plays for, and said, hey, uh, we're issuing these warrants for this guy's arrest. Why don't you tell him to turn himself in? So he finally did the smart thing after that and did go in and turn himself in. But had he just sat there and said, look, I parked in a handicap spot, spot I'll take my ticket and go be on my way. I don't know how how much of a ticket it would be, but let's say the ticket is $500. Probably not going to cost him as much as all this other stuff is. Plus, he had to spend some time in jail, which is not fun for anybody. I've never been there myself, but it's not fun for anybody. Um, And plus, he's probably, you know, Titans, they're not going to cut him, but I doubt they're going to try to re-sign him for next year. So, you know, way to really, you know, just hurt, hurt yourself. Just really badly. Just himself, off of something so team. silly. If, if he ends up having problems, too, it, it could easily hurt the team because he obviously just got arrested. Mm-hmm. Um, I would assume that he's going to be out for whatever by the t- next nope. game. But No, he's playing. Yeah, okay. No, That's what playing. I said. I'll assume he'd be yeah. out of jail. Oh, yeah. Um, no, oh, no, no. He was out that night. I mean, he, he went in for like a little bit. They booked him, probably issued yeah. him this citation. He got, he got bail or whatever. So I'm sure he had his lawyer meet him and stuff, too. So he's out. But he's still going to be playing. They're saying uh, that this has not affected his playing status yet. And it's one of those things where we're like, we got to let the law take its place. Huh? You know, like, come on. Really? Come, you know what he did. Everybody knows what he did. Suspend him a game. Save face, Titans. Do it before they make you do it. 
I, I don't understand why teams do that. And plus, he's not even that good. He got like five carries last weekend. So just give him all to Bishop Sankey and be better off for it. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Let us know what you think. Is he the biggest knucklehead in the NFL? No, he's not. There's bigger knuckleheads out there. But hit us up. Let us know what you think. Comments down below, of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. What's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. And that brings us to the part of the night where we talk about the words from my face fantasy football frenzy league. Okay, there's no frenzy in it, but I, I felt like putting that in there. You didn't like frenzy? I'm pinned down! <laughs> I'm just throwing in a bunch of sound effects now. Okay, that works. That works. <laughs> okay, so let's start off uh, with one of the top teams in the league, and that is Team Tavner. There, he is six and two. He won one hundred and three to sixty-seven over Team Two, Team T, who is uh, three and five right now. <clears throat> and that was pretty much led by Matt Forte getting him twenty-four points. Philip Rivers nineteen. Golden Tate had a huge game with 21. Antonio Gates continues to surprise people this year, especially in the fantasy realm. Uh, Everybody's like, oh, this guy's 35. He's not going to be that good. No, he's being spectacular. One of the top, I think he's the top uh, tight end so far in terms of points getting. And unfortunately, Team T really didn't get much help. Uh, But Tom Brady, he did have Tom Brady got him 34 points. So what can you do? And then after that, we have uh, Amingo ate my baby, winning 110-95 over Team Crawford. Mingo is uh, four and four right now, so even record. Team Crawford is three and five. If you remember, they were like he was one and four, and you remember Lucas. So uh, yeah, so he's he's coming back, mm-hmm. coming back. Uh, Crawford was led by Drew Brees with 24, Le'Veon Bell with 14, and Fitzgerald finally had. I think he had 22 points. I want to say if you added up all the other games he's played, he probably had like 32 points in all the other games. So played him at the right time. But Amingo had Jay Cutler with 21, and Gronkowski, like I said, he's being resurgent. He had 149 yards and three touchdowns this weekend for 32 fantasy points, so that was amazing. And then just solid all the way up and down. Most of his players played really well. And he even left Jeremy Macklin on the bench, who had 30 points, and Mark Ingram on the bench, who had 23. So, uh, you know, he had plenty Mm -hmm. more points to get. And then we'll talk about Team Baker. Uh, Now... Team Baker is 1-7, and, and I just feel bad for him because he scored 127 points. He would have beat everybody everyone but, else. Everyone but one? one other person if and the person who played. No, well, there's, I guess, two people in the league. Um, he played Cowboys and Indians who had 154 points. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, I remember looking at that game, too, and thinking, oh, man. Yes, yeah, sucks. I mean, like these I'm just gonna run through her whole roster. Uh, she had Aaron Rodgers with 24, Demarco Murray with 20, Stephen Jackson with 12, Vincent Jackson with one, Manuel Sanders with 30, Michael Bennett with 15, or Martellus Bennett, sorry, Chris Ivory with 16. Her defense got 26 points and her kicker got 10, and she left Ben Roethlisberger on the bench with 44. So you know they could have been way higher. I mean, I mean. Team Baker had a great team, too. Peyton Manning with 23. Alfred Moore with 14. Uh, 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 Antonio Brown with 25. T.Y. Hilton with 21. Niall Davis with 16. I mean, still started really good players. Would have beat almost everybody else except for the one he played. So, sorry about that. Uh, then it brings us to... Who do you think it brings us to, Brendan? Probably brings us to... Words from my face, chainsaws. That's who it brings us to. And And now, just to just to mention this, you would have beaten almost everybody else except for three. I know that. (laughs) So (laughs) it just so happens that the two highest scoring, the four highest scoring teams in the league this week all played each other. So, yeah, I mean, you had a good game. You you were you were smart to start Romo. Didn't really have that big of a game for you. Thank you, thankfully, but uh, then you had you know Mohamed Sanu still a really good waiver wire pickup to, that you had, but Arian Foster gave you 35 points. That was yep. amazing. Um, your defense did well with 16. Your kicker got you 15, but unfortunately, Team Hugel had uh, Nick Foles with 21. Sam I mean, Watkins with 20. His defense got 20 points. So you know that's just what can you do. It's just one of those things. Yeah, I mean, Romo Romo was my uh, backup in there because it was Kaepernick's uh, bye week, and it, it, it was kind of weird. Like, going into that game, there was a 30-point, the Monday night game, there was a 30-point. I, I would need 30 points to win. If I got 30 points, I would win. Uh, and I still had um, 
Romo and uh, Williams to the, to receive from Romo going into that game and thought, well, this is possible, but at the same time, do I want it to happen? Not so much. I don't know. But no, I was like, but that's that's not so bad. You know, he just needs to throw two touchdowns to uh, two, two Williams, like actually, or throw a good bit, and then um, you know, a little bit here and there, and the Redskins can can take care of that. But no, it was a very defensive game. Yeah. Instead, not a high scoring game. Um, still got kind of close. Uh, I remember thinking like down to the wire. I was like, well. This is overtime. If they just keep going back and forth for a while, maybe we could pick up enough points. But probably not, because I was also like, ah, I guess right here, if they throw a 70-yard uh, pass to Williams, who they weren't throwing, he wasn't throwing much to anyway, and he gets a touchdown, then I would win my game. But then the Redskins would lose. <laughs> <laughs> who wants that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was a you know closer game. Now we'll end up with uh, disgruntled Wookies. Me, um, I am four and four. I lost to Redskin Potatoes. I had the league's uh, lowest score of the week. I had fifty two points. Um, yeah, led by my defense, who got me negative six points. Uh, now Eddie Lacy finally had a good game with seventeen, but my next highest score was Carlos Santos with twelve. And I lost 52 to 78. So that was a pretty sad week for me. Really, really sad. Um, like, my quarterback got me eight. I got one zero from Torrey Smith. I hate Torrey Smith. I will never start you again because he'll get, like, 20 points one week and then zero points the next. So, yeah. yeah. And he didn't even he, – he started a player on bye week. So, yeah. It still and lost. And I still lost. So, that is the standing. So right now we have the two top teams are going to be Team Tavner and Team Hugel, one at six and two, one at seven and one. Everybody else is at four and four or closer. So it's still Tavner a close race. Are we got in the are on in the same uh, conference, right? Yeah. So they're they're gonna if you're in their conference uh, division, yeah, yeah you're kind of screwed. In ours, it's like all like we're still on top at four and four because there's hey, three. So four, hey, four teams. playoffs here we come. All we need to do is make <laughs> it to the playoffs. That's all we need to do. But yeah, so keep a, an eye on it. It's of course you can see it on Words of My Face League. It is on ESPN Fantasy Football. It is open to the public to go in and look if you'd like. So check it out. But I think that's about to do it for us for the evening. Thank you for watching. And uh, as always, I am Brian. With me as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. <laughs> Bye-bye.